Hello again. Thank you for tuning in. This is the second attempt at this video. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um, so again, thank you so much for tuning in. You are tuned in to the Encourager. My name is Nehru, and uh, so we're going to go through a uh, journal um, today, and we're going to pick up where we left off some days ago. And let's see. Mm, yes. Okay. So we are on 11.9. And again, this is the second time I'm recording this. <laughs> First time um, I made, I think I mistakenly pressed the stop button. Um, so um, here's the dream. Um, I recall very little, but uh, there was myself and a couple of other people, including Kim, who is the senior minister, Steve's wife at the Rock of Central Florida in Sanford, Florida. I was there for 20 years after I got out of the military uh, and before I decided to re leave religion altogether. And yes, non-denominational, non-denominational entities are religious too. That's why they have, that's why the program is the same every week. They do a couple of songs and Steve stands up to, to speak. That's why. It's religious. Same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. Okay? You go back in 10 years, most of them will be in the same place they are today. How do I know that? Because most of them are in the same place they are ten, from 10 years ago, spiritually speaking. Okay? Um, and so anyway, we are... And that's most people. Most For most people, change is difficult. Change isn't easy for most people. Um, but we are in a place, and it looks like we are straightening things out. Yeah, it needs some, some straightening out needs to be done. Putting the finishing touches on the interior. And I take that interior to mean inner. I-N-N-E-R. Okay? On 11, 10, 15... The, the look of our land immediately after small gestures of kindness. So that's interesting up there. And then this dream. Okay. After a small gesture of kindness, I by spirit see a land full of seeds walking around. On these seeds were the names of the people who were faithfully who had faithfully sown. Okay. I know me in that land. I sold faithfully. I gave to as most high led me to all the time and constantly. Okay. I gave to families. I gave, I sold into their seed, their children. Um, yeah, I gave well and good. I know for sure. Well done. My son, my earth angel. I know most high is saying that. Right. Uh, I know my ancestors are proud of me, both the Egyptian ones, the Asian ones, any other ancestors I have, those who I've known this lifetime, grandparents, my parents. I don't care what my parents think, um, at least those who I've known as parents. I don't care what they think. Um, I don't care what anyone even spiritually thinks, but they let me know they're proud of me. That's the only reason why I say it. Otherwise, I wouldn't care what they think either. OK, Um Happy Veterans Day always, and to our men and women, 365, and this year, 366, it's a leap year. Thank you for all that you do, and um, freedom is not free spiritually. Freedom is not free naturally. You have to fight for both, because if you do not, you will remain a slave, okay? Um I saw another, so I had another vision about a check for $17,200. Again, that's the second one, I think, in the last couple of pages. So money's going to start coming in somehow, some way. For me, it's the fruit that I've sown that, that I'm now about to reap. That to me, that's not just for those years, it's the faithfulness to the sperm donor, it's the faithfulness to Judy, it's the faithfulness to speak the truth, even to my siblings, it's the faithfulness to speak the truth, even to Steve, it's the faithfulness to stick to my journey and stay the course. He always spoke about staying the course, and you have a harvest, and it is based on 
what you've sown. So uh, let me ask you a question. How is your tree looking? Let's go to the next page. Um, oh, the balloon has gone up. Steve has shofar. Yep. I have to look. I don't know what that word. I don't know what I meant there. I don't know what that word is. Wait. Jim Schneider gave a word about something about it about to rain and R E I G N and R A I N. Okay. On eleven fifteen, I had a dream uh, that the Phillips, right, and they are a family that's a part of the Rock. Where uh, and I'm I'm looking for them. Where is everyone? Prophet, who was his name is Archie. His first name's Archie. Um, he was Steve appointed him a prophet at the Rock. I don't know how many years ago. Several years ago, right. And other than the Parker family, they have more members on staff or more family members on staff at that church than any other family. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. And so I was looking for him, wondering where he was. Mm. Uh, another dream on 1115. Again, I dream a lot. A conversation with a little kid who was about five or six, this boy, and he was a very sharp kid. I looked up Zach, Zachariah 1, 9 through 10, and this is what it says. I looked it up when I was going through the first recording. <laughs> this is what it says. I asked, where are these, my Lord? Then the angel who spoke with me, and in fact, let me go... Let me go and let me change this. Let me read verse eight as well, just so we can kind of get a better picture of what what this is saying here. Okay, so let's get a let's see here. So during the night, I had a vision and there before me was a man mounted on a red horse. He was standing among the myrtle trees in a ravine. Behind him was were red, brown, and white horses. I asked, What are these, my lord? The angel who was talking with me answered, I will show you what they are. Then the man standing among the myrtle trees explained, these are the ones the Lord has sent to go throughout the earth. Okay. Um, and let me read. I like the way it's worded in this other uh, way as well. Okay. All right. And this is from the USCCB. I don't need United States Conference of Catholic Bishops. Yeah. <laughs> right. But I like the way this one reads. It says, what are these, Lord? Starting in verse 9. These, then the angel spoke to me or answered me, I will show you what these are. Then the man who was standing on the myrtle trees spoke up and said, these are the ones the Lord has sent to patrol the earth. Huh, I like that, right? I like that. So, so that's Zechariah 1. 9 through 10. There is so much to do. And this is what Holy Spirit's telling me. Holy Spirit right there. Told me at the, on this day that there was so much to do. I was called to invoke. And I wrote from three from this date to this date. I, that was significant at that time. I don't recall. Okay. All right. So Steve was offered a permanent job at this bank that he was hired at. Oh, it was First Green Bank. I was trying to remember what bank it was. It was first green bank. Okay. And the reason why I don't read the right side is in my journals, I used to use the right side for, for messages from, from Steve or whoever was speaking during a service when I went right for 20 years, I didn't go to another service in another building. It was only at the rock. I didn't go anywhere else for 20 years. I was that dedicated. Okay. Um, 
And I would turn down. People were like, you want to go? No, why, why do I? I wasn't sent there. Why do I want to go there? I was sent to the rock. Why, why, why do I want to go? I don't want to visit your church. Why do I want to go over there? All that I need is right here. Now all that I need is right here, pointing to myself. <laughs> so 11.15, or excuse me, 11.18 of 15. What are the seven spirits of Yahweh? Spirit of Yahweh, spirit of wisdom, spirit of counsel, spirit of knowledge, fear of Yahweh God. I was writing some things down. That's not, oh, understanding and might. I don't know. I was. That's not seven. <laughs> right? And then I was talking about the order of Melchizedek. Oh, <laughs> that is some good stuff. The order of Melchizedek is, that's some good stuff. You should do your research and find out what the order of Melchizedek is. Okay? Um, four slave systems. Babylon, Greek, Egyptian, Egyptian enslaved, because there were Egyptians that were enslaved, and the religious four slave systems. I speak of the religious slave system all of the time. The U.S. justice, a legal system, is a slave system. The legal system is a slave system. That's why it's not a justice system. Okay? Because people who are unjustly treated go punished, and those who are guilty parties, they walk free, and often those are the motherfuckers that wear the badges. Yes. Yes. I am against the legal system that strongly. Yes. That strongly. Because by far and large, those are the sorry motherfuckers that have the power to change the system, but the lazy ass bitches don't change the system. I'm that adamant and that fierce about the legal system and its lack of accountability in the United States. Okay. The original intent of Yahweh reveals itself through children more often because children don't have the mental hangups that adults do. Okay, At least up to a certain age, they don't. 1222 when I look down at the timer. All right. Um, so let's take a look here. Dreamers are beyond current situations. My money will catch up to my dreams. Then I'll dream some more. And that's true. The kingdom is ever increasing. So, again, I'm wiser today than I was a year ago. Two years ago, a month ago, two weeks ago, last week, five days ago. Because I'm constantly, I am relentless in my pursuit of the truth of justice, equality for all of man. And equality is karma or dharma. Okay. I show up as karma in people's lives. I show up as healing in people's lives. Or I show up to expose the lies that people or and and injustices that's being done. That's why I'm here. Okay. All right. So here's a dream involving my brother Jonathan. I have eleven brothers. Um, eleven, nineteen, fifteen. I'm from a polygamous family. Just in case those of you are wondering, I have sixteen siblings. Um. Uh. And so, uh, dream with Jonathan. Jonathan, myself, and another guy were sitting in a room. I was sharing with them how I was such a serious child. My dad comes in and says, would you like to preach tomorrow? <laughs> Which was going to be Thursday in the dream. I say, yes, I could. He says, you don't have to. I can. I say, I don't mind at all. I'd be honored, right? Again, I don't know what that's about. That's interesting. Because I had long left his house. I had long left his church um, when I got out of the military. 1125, again, six days later, another dream. Dream involving... Now, Pastor Randy. Randy was a pastor. He was a... 
team, pastor, whatever Steve wanted to call it at the Rock of Central Florida, uh, for some time. He was sent out, him and his family, uh, his wife's name is Tanya, yes, Randy and Tanya, um, sent to Tampa, Florida to establish a house there. Um, unfortunately, uh, something happened. I don't, I don't know all of it. Um, but something happened between Steve, Randy, our house was supporting them until they got on their feet. The rock was supporting that church. I don't know what the name of it was. Um, but then something, something happened. And today, to my knowledge, that church is non-existent. Um, again, I don't know the details, but let's see what the dream says. Dream is involving Randy. I am currently waiting for Holy Spirit to bring the rest of the... Okay, so I could not remember what the dream was. So, hmm, I don't know. <laughs> um, so here we go. The woman I was married to at this time, or was going to marry, um, her name was Katina. And she had surprised me with Gator tickets. I'm a Gator fan. Go Gators. Um, don't talk to me about football. Go Gators. Um, <laughs> um, because, yeah, it's it's been a rough 15 years or something. Um, and she also bought, we got t-shirts, socks, whatever, right? My birthday is on 11-29, so she bought the tickets for my birthday as a birthday gift, okay? On 11-26, um, happy Thanksgiving, happy birthday to Steve and Archie. So Steve Parker, Steve Parker's birthday is 11-27, or excuse me, 11-26, and so is Archie Phillips' birthday, that guy I spoke of in that dream that I had that I was looking for uh, two pages ago, okay? Both of their birthdays are 1126. Steve was birthed in 64. Archie was birthed in 1970. I am 10 years older and three days older than younger than Steve. And I am four years and three days younger than Archie Phillips. OK, there was something there amongst that trio that most High was wanting to do. And again, I put this on the leadership, just like I read in the book of Enoch today. Most High went to Azazel, the leader, and he said, why are the people acting this way? You have allowed these actions to go on. So I go to Steve. I didn't, but I am spiritually. I go. To, I just left after he wouldn't recognize me telling the truth about Roxanne and her being a lesbian and preferring women, but being with men just as a cover-up. He didn't believe me. I forget what that's called. Um, so she was dealing with... Uh, 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 the Madonna whore complex, right? And she was trying to put me in that situation. Okay. So anyway, so there is something very powerful the, for the reason for us being there. But Steve and his laziness, his spiritual laziness or his, his religiousness he never liked numbers. He didn't like numerology. He didn't like talking about those things. I would talk to Kim, his wife, about those things. She was far more receptive about those things. Steve was nonchalant about those things. Most High put the fucking stars in the sky, Steve, so that you can see signs and synchronicities. He gave us numbers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So... I stopped sharing those things with him because he was lazy and lackadaisical about them. Okay. Um, let's see. Oop, focus. Talk is cheap only to the one that is a poor communicator. Holy Spirit gave me that. Thank you, dog. Talk is cheap only to the one that is a poor communicator. 1128, a dream. Talking to my brother, Kevin, I have a brother named Kevin, Kevin Joseph, I began to pull a string from my face that is or was separating both sides of my face. I started pulling it away from my face, no more divided, what was divided, 
and I said me. OK, so evidently. I was needing to separate myself even way back then, you know, nine years ago, I was needing to separate myself in some way still again, because we can't serve both man and master, most high being the master. OK, we can't serve, serve both. We have to make a choice. Those who serve both or attempt to, they fall into condemnation. Those are the ones who go to purgatory because Most High will not accept your half ass effort. Okay? Doesn't want that. Okay? Right. So, um,. Happy birthing day. And that was to the woman who I believe birthed me. That's why I put that there. I used to call her mommy. That's why I put that there. Right. And I had turned 41. On that day. <laughs> okay. So organize a staff of kingdomers focused on the seven mountains. Isn't that interesting? So in the book of Enoch today, we read about the seven mountains. There were three facing the east, three facing the south. There was one in the middle and the throne that in the mountain that was in the middle was higher than the other mountains. And the mountain that was in the middle was the mountain that most high set upon. So here I am writing. Organize a staff of kingdomers focused on the seven mountains. Hmm. Interesting. What are the demonstrations that compel me? Right. And this is Katina and I, we were married by Steve and it was nothing elaborate. It was just in his office amongst those who I believed had sown faithfully into me. That included Tim and Lisbeth. That included Archie and his wife, Tamara. Um, and that included Kathy uh, her husband, um, uh, Russell, uh, had not passed, but he was, it was going to be like six months down the road that he would pass in 2016 from brain cancer. Okay. Um, so she was there, but he was not, he was dealing with chemo and dealing with treatments and things at that time. Okay. Um, uh, that's pertaining to some, something at the rock. The children of Israel missing the promised land is the equivalent of man refusing relationship, righteous, religiousness, refusing relationship, what? Refusing relationship. Oh, okay. Dot, dot, dot. There's, there are dots there. <laughs> religiousness. Okay. So yes, anything that goes against most high. Essentially, that's your higher self. Most high is in you. Anything that goes against that is disobedience, is a sin. Plain and simple. You don't have to come up with lists. You don't have to come up with the laws. You don't have to write them on rocks. You don't have to write them in books. Very simply, what is disobedience? Going against your higher self. That's all that sin is. Going against your higher self. I'm married. I really shouldn't be opening my legs for him. I'm married. I really shouldn't be sticking this in her because she is not my wife. I really should not be taking this from the office because this is stealing. I really should not be swindling. I really should not be hustling on the street because this is stealing from. Yeah, right. That's all it is, is going against your higher self. OK, 12, 6, 16. It says I was employed. Most high is my employer today. Um, and again, back then I was doing dialysis treatments um, and I did not have the energy to work full time. And I was single or I wasn't single at this time. I had just gotten married. But um, she, our finances was were an issue, not so much in regards to the spending of it, but she 
did not want to bring our finances together. She felt like it was necessary that we keep things. We have separate bank accounts and all of that. And I don't agree with that. Um, I, I just don't. Um, yeah, I just don't. Um, my good friend Scott had a conversation with me and he talked to me about how him and his wife, Rachel, managed their finances and they've done it from the beginning and they've managed to make it work. And the way that they do it is they obviously have their individual W-2 income. And then if so, one takes care of the mortgage and then one takes care of all the other bills in the house. That's how they do it. If one wants a vehicle, they sit down and have a discussion and, um, yeah, they look at what their what their overall financial obligations are. So they look at first the the obviously the care of the family, the utilities, taking care of the house, making sure all those things are taken care of. And then they just share with the other person, this is the vehicle I'd like to get, this is what the payments are gonna be, um, this is the breakdown to see you know, to see how it fits into the financial situation. And then it's just like, okay, oh well, yeah, okay, it works. It's not gonna it's not going to stop the flow of, of what we have collectively going on. So go get the car. Yeah, go get the truck. Go get the whatever, right? He said that's how they handle things. And they just started doing it that way 13, 12, 13, 15 years ago, whenever they got married. And they just continued to do it that way. And that works for them. For me, I don't know if that system would work for me. Because I don't know. I just don't think that would work for me because having been a tax accountant, I would need to know the whole picture and someone having an account on the side, just, I don't know. I, I just, I don't know. Unless they were willing to share all of that information with me. She was not. Katina was not. So there, there, therein lies the problem. And L I E S lies. Um, 1217. Uh, dreamt I was shop <laughs> just shopping for a Ferrari, right? I thought they were overpriced. So I know today, <laughs> so I know today that, um, I don't know if I would ever own a Ferrari because t I, I know today, I didn't know then, but today it's like stages to own a Ferrari. Like you have to get an entry level Ferrari and you have to do this and you have to do, like, that's why a lot of car collectors don't have them. Like Jay Leno doesn't have a Ferrari because it's a asinine process. Like you have to own an entry level Ferrari before you can get anything else. And then you have to go, really? I'm buying your product and I'm spending six figures. Just give me the fucking car. I'm giving you the money. Why do I have to go through all it? Like it's dumb. Like, so I don't know if I'd ever even be willing to go through that process because kind of like Jay Leno, I think that's a little, that's a little dumb. I'm giving you two, three, four, five, six, seven hundred thousand dollars or more a month. I mean, really? Okay, yeah. You want to sell me an entry level something or tell me I can't get what I want? It's not going to go over very well. Um, Department of Veterans Affairs approved my claim. So that was good. So, and that was a first time. So I had applied for VA benefits because I was on dialysis, applied for VA benefits for the first time and it got approved the first time. And the only reason why it got approved, most high putting people in my plate, in my path to help me is I was going for the medical evaluation uh, exam. And the lady told me, she said, if you, she said, I'm going to tell you who you need to go to if you want to get a first time approval on this. She said, go to this gentleman. He's in Orlando. I lived in central Florida at the time. She said, go to this gentleman. He's in Orlando. And, um, yeah, he'll take care of you. And sure enough, he did. Okay. Most people. And again, I don't have the horror stories of the VA because most high has protected me. I angels, ancestors, they have protected me. Okay. I don't have the horror stories. The VA has done me extremely well extremely well okay uh, and so again a lot of it is your attitude and your perspective um, yeah so on 2 oop, 12 22 15 um, something about a pilgrimage most I was speaking to me about 
beauty of a true relationship with Yahweh, it's stunning. And it really truly is. It is, it is, leaves you speechless. Um, and I talk about being in love with Most High and Most High being my lover. Most High is not male or female, by the way. Um, it's an extraordinary thing. It really, really is to function in a place where so many are so dependent on someone else or something else to know that you can dwell here without attachment. And this is something I'm going to be speaking on. So thank you, Most High, for bringing me up to this. That you can live a completely detached life here on earth. Detached from what? Any and everything. Sad, sad guru speaks of not being attached to anything. Nothing. Not the house you live in, not the car you drive, not the next one you want, not anything. Not your job, not being attached to any of it emotionally, being able to easily let it go. That is so important here. And so many people find themselves remaining in stagnated places because they are not willing to let go of things and of people and of places and of thought processes and of habits. They are not willing to let them go. So living a life that is completely detached from the 3D is a key to your mastering yourself. To you mastering yourself. Okay? And I continue to master myself. 12, 28, 15, I can't change or even reach anyone of my own power or will. Again, I can't make you change. You can't make me change. We can't control anyone 100% except for our own selves. Again, spouses, children, pets prove this every day. 12, 30, 15, you will see promises fulfilled in your lifetime, Holy Spirit. I didn't know it, but I was on the ancestral karmic journey. I didn't know it, but I was. Genesis 26 and 13. Let's look that up and see what that says. Thank you so much for, for tuning in, by the way. Uh, our subscribers and... Um, those who are just visiting, <laughs> just dropping in. Um, let me see what this says. 2613. By the way, 2613, right? Numerology. That's right. 26 is twice 13. Just FYI. And Genesis means the beginning. Okay. Um, so this is what it says. The man became rich and his wealth continued to grow until he became very wealthy. So in the King James Version, I already know what this says now that I see this in the New International Version. It says he began to prosper, continued to prosper, becoming very prosperous. That's what that says or something similar. Okay. So as we go on in our days... Okay, and this is not a this is not a materialistic prosperity. I am rich today, despite having limited limited despite my bank account in the natural not being six or seven figures. It's not even five figures. Okay? Despite that, I'm still rich. First the spiritual, then the natural. Um, all right. And so here, so Melinda is my daughter's mother, my eldest daughter's mother. Melinda tells me of a dream she had in which Katina gives birth to twin girls. And I do not want to hold them because something about Katina has me wondering how am I going to raise 
two girls by myself. I was calling around for help on my phone. So this is interesting. Katina and I, she, as it turned out, could not have children. Again, there's something with her uterus like it was turned or twisted. Something was, something internally was going with her, with her bodily, right? She could not have children. She was in her 40s when we got married. Um, but she could not have children. Had never been pregnant. Okay. And what I believe is most high protected me from having children with her because he knew what was going to happen. And I said this in a previous, in a previous video, of, uh, in a journal reading, she only wanted me for that purpose. She only wanted me for children. So this is my, this is part of why I have a, and I really have to be careful with what I say in regards to women, because I don't want it to sound like I hate women because I don't. I love women. They are beautiful. They are nurturing. They are loving. They are supportive. They are all of these things. However, that's not been my experience or they can be all of those things. That's not been my experience. My experience has been women are li lying, manipulating, conniving, sneaky, Jezebels who use you and only come after you for their own personal gain. That's been my express that's been my experience with women in my romantic life. It doesn't matter who you talk about. It could be Martise, who left me for my sperm donor. Yes, she did, the polygamist when I was serving our country in Germany. It could be Katina, who did not go with me when I got my kidney transplant in Pittsburgh. She never showed up. I was there for 21 days. It could be Roxanne, who prayed for me. Most High sent me to her. And then she chose the karmic and did spell work against me and witchcraft and smear campaigns. Stole my clients, took my business, hacked into my accounts, hacked into my bank accounts, hacked into, did all of this, right? It could be the sperm donor's wife, Janet who's doing witchcraft against me or any one of the other women who's still following him around as he's incarcerated, listening to his orders. So my experience with women has really not been good in my personal life. So that is why today, those of you who are wondering, why does he speak this way against women? This is why, and again, not all women, and I don't look at women generally, like if I see a woman out in public, I don't look at her like she's strange or anything like that. Um, I still hold the door for women, Right. Um, but when it comes to my personal life, I have big walls and big balls to say to somebody, I don't need you and stay the fuck away from me. OK, so again, for those of you who have been wondering, why does he speak about marriage and why is he so much against? And I'm not against marriage. I just don't believe that that's the route that I'm to take. Okay? Because again, for my focus, I believe I am to do this and my time is not to, I should not be deciding, hmm, do I want to spend time with this person or do I want to go walk through a garden for three hours? They don't have that time. They want me to do this. They want me to do that. I don't have time for that. Most High has me on a fucking mission. I don't have time to do what somebody else wants me to do. And that's the truth. I don't have time to do what somebody else wants me to do. I'm on a mission. I have a job to do. Okay? And so, to me, romantic relationships, they only come to steal, kill, and destroy. That's all romantic relationships come to do. Because that's been my experience. Okay? Okay? That's why I view relationships, that's why. And that's why I choose to be celibate today. That's why I don't have a romantic relationship. My last one was in 2022, and I told her that I wasn't healed from the situation with the fallen angel twin, or false twin, that I wasn't healed from that, and I would be doing her an injustice if I was to continue to pursue a relationship with her. 
I was honest and I told her that. And she was wanting to pursue things further or move things along. I wasn't willing to do that because, again, I knew I wasn't healed in 2022. And she wasn't going to be treated the best way she could be treated. I knew that. Okay, so we need to be honest with ourselves. All right. So and and the people that we are involved with. All right. So um, let's see. Okay. yes. So I am glad Most High protected me from having children with Katina. Thank you, Most High, Lord of the Spirits. Thank you. Okay. 1, 3, 15, or 16 now. Had a conversation about choosing a career selling life insurance. I'm not sure what that's about. Oh, that was a dream. Oh, yeah, I remember that dream. Scott was in that dream. Yes, yes, yes. As soon as I said that, I remembered Scott was in that dream. So here's the dream. This is a really interesting dream. So Scott was a part of the dream. We were, and by the way, Scott's my, if there's someone I would consider my best friend, it would be him. Um, we've known each other since we were 16, and I'm considered a brother and a son to their family. Uh, and so, yeah, that's, we just, yeah, no matter how much time passes, we're, that's how we are. Um, because we are, we are soulmates in this way. Again, we all have masculine and feminine energies. We are soulmates in that we've shared previous lives together. I might have been his father. He may have been my father. He may have been my mother. There is some type of spiritual connection there from a previous life. And as a hint, when you have spiritual strong ties to people like this, that is an indication that you two were in a previous life. You two were in some type of family relationship. You might have been in a marriage because you could be a female in this lifetime and a male in another lifetime. Who knows? But you have soulmates today. And people get all weirded out. Oh, you're gay. Oh, you're. First of all, gay means happy. So shut the fuck up. Right. Look up it and look it up in a dictionary. Homosexual means what you're talking about. Use the correct word. I'm not about being politically correct as if you can't tell. OK, so. Um, so I'm extremely gay. I hope you are gay. Right. Uh, so. We are connected to people that are connected to us in a super in a spiritual way okay I, he's one of those individuals okay um uh so i tell one of the guys that i know of someone or people that have successfully made a transition into that career i started thinking about whether or not i should choose that career the game ends. Oh, we're at a sporting event. I forgot that part up there. We're at a sporting event. So the game ends. I walk out with Scott and this guy. Eventually, we separate to different exits. Me and Scott go separate ways. Uh, I'm still thinking about a career in insurance sales, wondering if I'm aggressive enough to be successful in that sales environment. I wouldn't can call myself a salesperson. People buy from me, whatever they buy. Thought, uh, 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 whatever it is, you sell a lot of things, not just products. Um, and so, yeah, people buy from me because because they like me and they trust me. People don't buy from me because I convince them. I don't think I'm a very good salesperson in that regard. I don't think. Chevys are good cars, so don't ask me to try to sell a sev shell, <laughs> sell a Chevy. I would never go work at a Chevy dealership because my heart doesn't believe in the product. When I was in car sales, I worked at a Toyota dealership because I believed in the product. Okay, I walk outside and it starts raining. I put my phone in my pocket and start running to my car and then I wake up. Okay, so... I'm not sure what that insurance thing is about. Um, yeah, I also think it's significant that uh, Scott went one way and I went another way again. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a sign of the times. Uh, again, you have to be willing to let go 
of any and all things and people and places that do not serve your good if you want to ascend to where you need to ascend to. Just be thankful for the times and years that you had with that individual. Rejoice in the good times and those good memories because you have to understand that there are, so there are seasons for things. Not everything is meant to last forever. And in fact, relationships, almost none of them are meant to last, even for decades. So be thankful. This year's declaration uh, from Steve, I don't know what that was. Dream, why is Jimmy wearing a Domino's pizza sun visor? So, uh, uh, so Jimmy is Steve Parker's brother-in-law. He is the, he is the uh, brother of Steve, Kim's wife. Or, uh, <laughs> Steve's wife. Kim is Steve's wife. <laughs> I don't know why he was wearing a a Domino's pizza sun visor. I hope that doesn't mean his business is going. He owns a multi-million dollar customer service, customer or phone training company that he built from the ground up. He built up to multi-million dollar. I hope that. I don't know. I'm just. Does that mean the doors are closing? I don't know. I just. Mm -hmm. Why is he wearing a pizza sun visor? He. Because I've collaborated with him, I know what his pay. I know what his salary is every year. I know how much he pays himself. Why is he wearing a domino sun visor pizza sun visor? I don't know. Um, my decree. I will be the change agent. Yahweh has called me to in 2016. Okay. I've always been passionate about what Most High wants me to do. Everything is a mission to me. Everything. Every job I get, not job as in employment, everything someone asks of me, it's a mission. I do it even when I don't feel like it. Most High wanted me to forgive my enemies when I sent the Grim Reaper. Yes, I sent the Grim Reaper, but I also asked for healing for them. I didn't want to do that, but Most High asked me to do that because that is what Most High is. He is He is judgment. He is just. That's what he is. And that's what he was wanting me to be. Um, and and to, to have a little mercy, he was wanting me to do that. I was not wanting to do that. Because I see that as a way of letting the enemy back in. All right. And he knows that's not happening. So him and I, I, again, I'm trying to get away from he. But Most High and I, we have a conversation about that. And we've had a couple of them. Okay. So thank you so much for tuning in. Again, this has been a journal through my journal. <laughs> and I'm going through... The first three years of the last 10 years of this karmic cycle that is ending this year. That is ended this year. I closed out a 10-year karmic cycle this year, a three-year karmic cycle this year, and a seven-year karmic cycle all in 2024. Okay? So, thank you again so much for tuning in. My name's Nehru. You've been tuned into The Encourager. And as always, be encouraged and continue to pursue your highest, purest, truest form. Talk to you soon.